Disclaimer, this video is going to be very frustrating. In it, I'm going to outline NASA's very ambitious 1963 plans for the conquest of our solar system. Stuff like Titan moon bases and factories in low Earth orbit. You have been warned that this episode will leave you wondering if we're in the wrong timeline. Oh, and watch till the end to see an updated timeline for our universe. Special thanks to Scott at Aerospace Projects Review who provided the materials for this video. Go check out his website for more fantastic content like this, such as crazy spacecraft and plain concepts that never got built. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. In 1963, NASA had big plans. They had the moon in their sights and the forward-thinking scientists were already starting to wonder what comes next. After all, the moon was simply a stepping stone to a future unimagined before by humanity. Plus, if they did get to the moon first and beat the Soviets, it's very likely that there would be a round two, round three, or many more rounds of firsts that Russia could finally get the upper hand, something the McCarthy red under the bed wanted to avoid. So imagine that you're the team at Convair pitching to NASA by looking at the solar system map, Pluto included, and coming up with all sorts of crazy ambitious ideas. I'd love to see a comment at the end of the video if your ideas were included. Anyway, here's what they came up with. Convair had grouped its plans together into three categories conservative, intermediate, and ambitious. Depending, of course, how much taxpayer dollars they could swindle, I, I mean acquire, from hardworking Americans. And I say that because as you know, Convair completely blew out its budget with the B-36 bomber. Anyway, the Convair team projected one mission in the 70s, six between 1985 and 2000 for the most conservative estimates. The intermediate plan saw three missions in the 70s and 12 by 2000, and the most ambitious plans, hold on to your helmets, saw six missions in the 70s and 22 by the year 2000. Man, doesn't that make you sad already? The fact that we didn't get one other mission beyond the moon's orbit in that entire time? These missions would have been spread over various planetary bodies depending on the suitable time frames and how the different planets eventually lined up. For example, Uranus and Neptune would have been visited from the Jupiter base or by using the gas giant's gravitational pull as a gravity assist. So let's break that down exactly where and when we would have gone. For the conservative missions, there would have been a powered flyby of Mars by 1974 an orbit of Venus and Mars by 1984 and 85 respectively and a proposed quick trip to Mercury in the same year, either by a robot or man. There would be a surface mission to Mars by 1994, and a manned mission to Jupiter by the eve of 2000. For the intermediate mission, given a bit more cash, in addition to the previous plans, they would also do a flyby mission to Venus, a Mars landing by 1982 instead of 1994, and a flyby of Jupiter by 1987. There would be a longer term base built on Mars in 1993 and a short term base on Jupiter, specifically the moon Callisto in 1996. The most ambitious goals saw them traveling much the same in the 70s, but it's the 1980s where it gets totally wild. There would be a Mars base established by 1986 with a flyby of Jupiter the very same year. Then in 1990, there would be a short landing in Jupiter with a further flyby mission to Uranus and Neptune. They would also build a permanent moon base on Callisto in Jupiter and landing on Titan in Saturn by the edge of 2000. This makes the book 2001 A Space Odyssey not even science fiction as humanity would have beaten its own timeline. Bonkers. Even the most conservative version saw NASA having a permanent presence on the moon in the early 70s. After all, why would you just go to the moon a few times and never return for 50 years? As if that would happen. 
Further documents from a few years later showed that there would be a permanent and mobile moon bases by 1982, as well as a lunar spaceport by 1986 for deep space travel. For low Earth orbit, they also assumed in the late 60s that there would be orbital laboratories, followed by a permanent space station in 1972. In 1976, there would be an enlarged installation above our heads, where, shockingly, astronauts would be able to sleep overnight. Yes, this is what we have only achieved today. By 1986, there would be factories in orbit, hospitals, and even a new mission control. Our last note was the usage and development of controlled thermonuclear reaction drives by the mid-90s, with a nuclear pulse drives soon after. Other missions around this time saw flights to asteroids, comets, and much more. It looks like the age of exploration on crack and something that would propel humanity to the stars. So forgive the French, but what the hell happened? What's wild is that these Convair aspirations even had the possibility of failure built in. As in, they estimated that 25% of all missions might fail, that they would still be able to reach their timeline. To get enough materials into orbit to perform these missions, Convair would have required a conservative 23 launches in 25 years, or up to 94 launches in the required 25 years for the most ambitious plan, which is staggering to imagine back then. What's even more, this is without the project blowouts or any issues to the budget. So now we get to the fall of the program. By the time NASA actually landed on the moon, they knew that much of this plan would never happen. The Saturn V, the linchpin launch system of the Apollo program, was scrapped even a year before the moon landing. And no other rocket development, at least of that size, had been greenlit. Why? Well, it's the job of showing capitalism rules and communism drools that was done with landing on the moon, and the average taxpayer had no interest going forward with any more Apollo missions, let alone these ambitious ideas for the rest of the solar system. Funding was pulled to other great works, as well as pointless wars in Southeast Asia, and their talented NASA, as well as aerospace giants like Convair that made these missions possible, bled to other projects. The team knew that their project to fly to the stars had an end date and left like rats on a sinking ship. The shuttle that would eventually come, having been delayed with no capacity to go to the moon or beyond, was too little, too late. Now if you're ready, I'll tell you the really sad news. We will return to the stars, but we watching right now might not be alive to see it. According to researchers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, if NASA operates with today's budget and the timelines that it has used since its foundation, a la very long timelines with many delays, this is what we can expect. The researchers concluded that we would have our moon mission by 2030, perhaps even Mars beyond that in 2045, with a crewed mission to an asteroid could take place as early as 2073, while astronauts may land on Jupiter by 2103 and on Saturn by 2132. Yes, you heard that right, the year 2132. That's 132 years later than the most ambitious Convair estimate from 1963. And honestly, if I can now speak with my heart of hearts about everything that we've just talked about, it makes me incredibly frustrated. The fact that the budget for NASA after the moon landings fell off so sharply now that they had won the space race, and seeing what they would have done had the budget continued to operate just makes me mad that we don't live in a world of tomorrow with uh, bases on Mars and the moons of Jupiter and that we have colonies around the solar system. We could have gone out there and had a solar system that was closer to the development of TV shows like The Expanse rather than what appears to be the wrong timeline today. But perhaps there is hope for the future, led by private industry and out of the hands of NASA. And it's with that thought that I leave you watching the video today. Leave a comment down below what you think and what your favorite missed opportunity was from NASA's crazy 1963 plans.